John Carpenter movies occupy a space in my mind that's like, they stick with you. Like I keep thinking about John Carpenter movies. Where you going, buddy? Like most movies are just movies. Like I could watch a hundred fucking Spider-Man movies and they're all gonna be about the same amount of interesting to me, which is only a little. And I'm gonna walk away from them feeling only a little bit like they did anything for me cognitively or intellectually. It's like, I think about John Carpenter movies in normal interactions with people. I wanna like tell people about John Carpenter movies and evangelize what he's done with his film, which is a very weird sensation. You know, he's one of the greatest living directors. His first movie is actually called Dark Star, but he's most famous for Halloween. That's probably his big sort of entrance to the uh, world of horror filmmaking and filmmaking really. He did direct Ghosts of Mars, which is very bad. So, you know, I think everybody makes mistakes. Oh, he's also like a musician. I mean, he scores all of his own movies, which is incredibly cool. So my favorite of his films is something that's, that's called the Apocalypse Trilogy, which is the thing in the Mouth of Madness and Prince of Darkness. And those are all predicated on this concept of cosmic horror, which is something that H.P. Lovecraft sort of pioneered. What's scary about the concept of cosmic horror is that there is something that is of nature, but not of a nature that we know or understand. Like there is an explainable reason why these things are happening, but it's not a reason that like our puny human minds can really comprehend. You know, in The Thing, the horrific part is not like a ghost or a monster that's just random like attacking people. It's a physical entity from another planet that is taking over people's bodies and changing them. In Prince of Darkness, I mean, I don't want to, spoiler alert, in Prince of Darkness, the villain is literally Satan. And Satan is not like a magical creature from the Bible. He's like an alien that was cast down to earth and was entombed in this church. What he's playing with in In the Mouth of Madness is really our ability to parse what is real and what is imagined and what is what is fiction and what is fact. I'm not a piece of fiction. I think therefore you are. One of the things that John Carpenter does that's really good is he puts people in this isolated situation where it's just them isolated from the rest of humanity dealing with something that is absolutely horrific. And there's something that's especially terrifying and upsetting about that concept to me. And I think one of the things that he does really well is he doesn't let you escape. There's no easy out from the places that he puts his characters in. They can't just walk away. They literally can't in many cases, right? The thing is great. They're isolated in the middle of the Antarctic at a research facility, and they have to figure out how to get this thing out of there. And there's no other place to go. They can't get on a helicopter. They can't call somebody. They can't walk away. US number 31 calling McMurdo, urgent. Come in, over. Great. It's not the way you think of modern horror with like a lot of like gore and guts and like people being ripped apart. I mean, that does happen in his movies, but it's much more subtle. But what really is horrifying about his films and why I think they transcend the genre of horror is because they are psychologically horrific. John Carpenter is addressing big questions and big ideas, but he's doing it in a way that is filled with awareness and self-awareness and a, a sense of levity. Not the Carpenters too. Sutter Kane. Look at them, they're everywhere! We started walking in love. You gotta be fucking kidding. I mean, he, he changed me as a person. He changed the way I feel about the world. And the way I feel now is that uh, we're living a horrific lie manufactured by Satan and or an author named Sutter Kane. And soon the fabric of reality will be torn to shreds in front of us and the gaping maw of a hellish neither world will be unveiled and John Carpenter will be waiting there, playing a synthesizer. <laughs> <laughs>